Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Global Wrestling News. Scott Casper here, Tony Hager over there. Let's get right to it. The quick hits from around our sport. In 2015, Gabe Dean won a Pan Am silver medal on just two weeks' notice. Since that time, he's been the most talked about Greco prospect in the country. After months of literally begging, the four-time All-American finally relented. How big is this, Tony, in your estimation anyway, for our national team? Well, I think it's smart, in my opinion, on, on his part. You know, there's so many good freestyle guys out there. I mean, he could make Maybe a breakthrough at some point, but he goes over to Greco. He's now a star. He's a big name. He's a household name. He's going to get the media attention. This is what our sport really has need on the Greco side of things. I mean, can you imagine how much more popular Greco would be if guys like Kyle Dake and David Taylor and joined Gabe Dean in that effort? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, this uh, the senior world team. The, you know, there's just uh, not a lot of household names, so it's hard for fans probably to really get up, you know, get pumped about the world championship because they don't really know who these guys are. They're, you know, Dake and Taylor, those guys are household names. Those right. guys got gear. People wear their gear and they bring over to Greco. I think Greco, you know, could see some popularity. All right, news out of Arizona, Arizona State to be exact, two-time cadet national double champ Nick Ramo has given his verbal to Coach Zeke Jones. Ramo is ranked third in the class of 2019 and will likely see action for the Sun Devils at 33 or 41. Nice to see an elite wrestler from New Jersey take his talent to the West Coast, Tony. Well, Nick Ramo, he's been really winning it all. You know, he's beaten some of the top talent in the country. Anytime you can get a double champ from Fargo to commit to your you know your squad that's really that's great obviously um, you know this is class of 2019 though I'm really kind of taking this with a grain of salt nowadays it just seems like we see a lot of flip-floppers like you said east coast west coast there's gonna be a lot of people in his ear want to know why he's not staying home okay well another commitment on the west coast this time to Stanford it's Real Woods a three-time state finalist the top 20 senior won state titles as a freshman and junior and represented the U.S. at the Cadet World Championships last year he projected out to compete collegiately at 33 or 41 and joins number 18 Shane Griffith, a Bergen Catholic of New Jersey, as a Cardinal commit in this year's recruiting class. The Cardinal has also scored a commitment from the 18th ranked Shane Griffith. Academic requirements can be a barrier, but it's also an advantage. Tony, would you rather get a degree from Arizona State or Stanford? Uh, that's a no-brainer. I mean, uh, you know, really what I've been kind of is, you're going to take Stanford, obviously. I mean, from a uh, uh, you know, from what I'm seeing, a lot of these recruits are really focusing on their academics. Mm -hmm. And it, what it was in the past is you, you only wrestle, right? You're only on the you're on the field trying to get that athletic scholarship. But right. there's only so many scholarships to go in wrestling, and people are you know more conscious of that. So you know they're really kind of focusing. Okay, well, I want to go to a top team, right. and if I have to do that, it, you know I'm not going to get a full ride. So I got to get an academic scholarship. Uh, so I think a lot of our big name guys are really focusing on that. That way they can get those scholarships. Well, after weeks of speculation, Patricio Lugo has announced his transfer from Edinburgh to Iowa. The two-time national qualifier will redshirt this year and then take over for the Hawks at 49. Over two years at Edinburgh, Lugo compiled a record of 63-18, and 18, was an EWL champion just this last year. Hard to replace a guy like Brandon Sorensen, but... This is as close as you're gonna get. Yeah, this is this is huge news. I know they've been working on this a lot. Uh, there's been a lot. There's a lot of coaches that knew and Lugo wasn't happy at Edinburgh. A lot of people knock on his door. So, um, yeah, this is a guy that had has beaten Brandon Sorensen. So, for the hot guys, for him to sit out a year, <laughs> fill in for Brandon after this is uh, this is about as good as you get. You don't have to you know take a risk on a high school recruit. You've got a guy that you you already know. Can be an All-American. All right. Well, top 50 recruit as a senior anyway. Joel Shapiro has verbally committed to Iowa State. Shapiro finished 46-0 as a junior, racking up some 29 pins on his way to a state crown. Shapiro projects out at 97 and joins Weston DeBlasi as the top 100 commit for the Clones. Tony, are you surprised? Yeah, I'm not really surprised that this this happened. He's been working out in the regional training center ever since Dresser really has gotten there. I'm I'm more shocked that they, I guess they didn't pick uh, he didn't pick Northern Iowa because I thought Schwab and company had a real good finger on this guy. Um, Iowa obviously too was in the mix there, but they couldn't. Iowa probably couldn't offer him the deal that you and I and Iowa State could. So either way, good to see uh, for Iowa people for him to stay in the state of Iowa. Well, it's official. Northern Iowa is moving to the Big Twelve, but former you and I standout Dylan Peters is. Well, he's headed back to the MAG. Two-time All-American has just been hired as a volunteer assistant at Tom Borelli Central Michigan. Peters was a four-time national qualifier and the 2014 Mid-American Conference champ at 125. You know, 
Dylan Peters was a rock solid leader for Doug Schwab and company. You know, I think that this is a great hire for him. This is somebody that one of those guys you talk about uh, doing it right off campus. You know, he was a leader. He's a guy that also too went through a lot of adversity. He was injured a lot of time mm-hmm. to be an All American, so he's going to be able to you know, work well with these college athletes to not only be a, a coach as far as skill-wise, but off the mat, too. I think Dylan Peters, is this is going to be a good step for him. All right, next up, we'll hear from U.S. Greco-Roman head coach Matt Lindlin on our team's preparation for Paris. You're watching Global Wrestling News, presented by Coca-Cola. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, We purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, We've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to yellow-blue LED lighting, and you should too. All right, welcome back. The U.S. Greco-Roman world team has four members in the world rankings, and Greco head coach Matt Lindland has high hopes for his squad at the World Championships next month. Track Wrestling's Andy Hamilton sat down with Matt to discuss the team's training camp and more. That two-week training camp, what did you learn about your guys? What did I learn about my guys in that two? That they, they're willing to work hard. They're willing to put the time in and uh, work hard. I also, I also learned that we need to be more disciplined because there was there was moments where you know we're we're getting out there at seven o'clock and we had some guys that uh, felt like other people should wait for them. You know, hey, if I'm five minutes late, no, we're we're all on time. We're all ready to go. You know, you're holding us up. You're holding the progress of what we're trying to do moving forward. Um, so I, you know, I learned that I, I still gotta, you know, teach these athletes what it, what it means to be held accountable, what it means to be responsible, um, and you know, just the expectations of a professional athlete. I mean, you have a lot of high expectations. You're you're expected to perform at a very high level. So everything you do has to be at a high level. You have to be disciplined. You have to have incredible structure. And if if they don't. Um, you know, we should have we should have consequences. You know, there should be some kind of consequences that they face, and you know whether that's you know hurting them financially with their stipends, which you know I certainly don't want to do. They don't make enough money as it is, but they still have to uh, be held accountable, whatever that is. How important is this year in terms of generating some momentum for the program throughout this quad? Oh, I think it's it's every year. <laughs> I don't know if this year is any less important. I mean, last year was an Olympic year, so I mean that was the that was kind of the big one, but. Uh, I think this year is critical, just like any other year. We want to go out and we want to perform the best of our abilities. We want to. Uh, we have capable athletes that are capable of performing at a very high level in the World Championships in Paris this summer. So I expect big things out of them, but uh, they have to. They have to prepare properly every time. There's no time for you know being late. You know, being late. Uh, you know, hurts your performance, hurts your training because. Um, you want to you want to do everything right. You want to have that discipline. You want to all the way through. You know it, it carries over what you what you do off the mat carries over into what you do on the mat. Tony, what are your thoughts on our Greco team as they head to Paris? Well, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I mean, we uh, our best guys rank number twelve in the in the world. So really, um, there, it's just not where we want it to be. Obviously, we want to be the best in the world. We've always been kind of on that lower tier, real low tier in Greco. So um, our junior our junior level, I think, is, is progressing, but our senior level right now is just not where it needs to be. Kevin Jackson's coming up next. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Thanks to Pure and Clean Sports.
This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made from scratch two topping pizza for only $12. For easy quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottle. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind, of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, check them out. Pureandcleansports.com. Well, the USA National Freestyle Team is gearing up for the World Championships with their annual camp at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. And for the first time since his new job, we were able to catch up with National Freestyle Developmental Coach Kevin Jackson. So we've got our full freestyle national team staff together here. I mean, Joe, Joe Russell came in a, a couple weeks ago. You're now here in Colorado Springs and, and working the camp and, and you know, going to work with Bill uh, this summer and, and get all of our teams ready. Uh, Talk about the guys you're going to be working with. I mean, you're going to be leading our freestyle effort for this quad as a team. Well, I think Bill's put together a great staff. You know, I really like Joe Russell and what he brings to the table. Um, obviously, Bill has been working with our senior level program for, for years now, and, and also he's, he's come through the program. He was, he was at the Olympic Training Center, um, um, and he won his world championship out of, out of Colorado Springs. And so um, uh, I think that the staff that we have uh, is going to do everything in our power to help these guys reach their full potential. And if they reach their full potential, we're going to, we're going to have some pretty good results. And, um, you know, uh, clearly there's going to be young kids in here, uh, high school kids doing the Kyle Snyder type of right. activity. You're going to be working with right. some of them. How important will it be for us as a nation to develop more kids earlier, like Kyle? I mean, Kyle set an example. So did Henry Cejudo, guys you've worked with. Um, for some of the kids now that might have the same goals. Well, ex exactly. We have a program that right now called the Accelerator Program, which is inviting high school age kids into our into the, into the training center uh, to do the same things that that Henry Cejudo and Kyle Snyder did. Um, uh, also, you have guys like Mark Hall that spend a ton of time here in Colorado Springs, and so we want to continue that. Uh, we want to bring those guys in because we recognize that if they're here, they're going to win gold medals a lot earlier in their careers, and so um, it's exciting, and we're looking forward to uh, to getting those kids uh, in, into the springs. Now, I'm sure the cadet guys are calling you Mr. Jackson. That's right. right? That's right. They Have you told them they can call you Kevin yet? They, they, they call me KJ. They call me Coach Jackson. But, you know, um, you know, I'm a veteran around here. I'm a senior, senior leader around here. So it's all good. It's all good. You know, I like this move, Tony, more and more that I think about it. I think there's some critics, but not everybody can grind that college coaching job. Yeah, it's, it really isn't for everybody. You know, right now, uh, we don't know a whole lot of, of how he can transition into this development coach. Obviously, tons of success on the freestyle level. He's been coaching. He's gone overseas for USA Wrestling before on the on the coaching level. So I think the the critics out there obviously are gauging everything off of what he did at the college level, and it's just a completely different world. Yeah, that's right? not a fair. You know, as far as time yeah. commitment and, and all the places you needed to be. So. Um, 
what what I you know really concerned with is Slade did a really good job. I mean everything our junior level or cadet level all that right now is in real good spot. Our development is great, and that's where we're seeing our Greco. I think our Greco at the junior level is is really rising, and we're making lots of improvements. So as long as you know that's go, same in freestyle Greco, everybody kind of works together for the same goal. I think uh, it's going to be successful. All right. Well, we're going to see the future of our sport as Fargo is just around the corner. We have an epic Fargo throwback match after the break. You're watching Global Wrestling News, brought to you by Fairway Food Store. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. Well, the Cadet and Junior National Championships are literally just days away, and we wanted to throw it back to the 2015 year. That's when Arizona State commit Nick Ramo and Nebraska commit Alex Thompson brought the house down, literally brought the house down, putting up 28 points during the match. Final, Alex Thompson of Iowa in the red, Nick Ramo from New Jersey in the blue. And a heavily taped, or maybe that's a knee brace on the left knee of Alex Thompson. We'll see if... Uh... That plays a factor, and immediately oh, we're going to see Ramo whip him over. No points yet, but he's going to put the head on the mat and score a takedown, and he's got that far elbow. Ramo is crazy strong. You can tell by the way that he wrestles, the way he's able to move, guys. He's got a, a tremendous strength advantage for his age. He's He's been mighty impressive. He won Greco a couple days ago, now looking to double up here. Yeah, and four tacks and two pins on the way to the finals for Ramo. Well, he's Headlock gonna... attempt anyways. He's gonna pop out for two more. So Ramo out to a 4-0 lead early. Interesting to see Thompson look look headlocked there pretty early in the match. I mean, what that tells me, he's feeling very uncomfortable with the strength <laughs> of Ramo. With the pressure, the forward pressure Ramo's bringing in. And I feel like uh, Thompson is, he seems like a pretty strong guy himself, but maybe out horse where he's you know not used to. Ramo is on the ropes. Oh, and double nice from double. the outside, though, and he's going to take him. Are they going to go two or four? That should be two and two. Two and two, and they call it, well, it was four. And the two and two will be confirmed. The judge said four. The mat official in the chair both said two and oh, two. Oh, this could be a four. Oh, That's four. That could be close to oh, a four. They're not going to go four there. I thought they might. They're not. They're going to say two for Thompson. So now he's in the lead. 6-4, quite a response from Alex Thompson. Yeah, that's just what the doctor ordered if you're Alex Thompson, feeling a little uncomfortable. You just get back to your stuff and do what you do best and take control of this match. That's that's uh, textbook. That quick finish, that's how you got to finish against Ramo. You right. can't take your time. You got to blow right through him or he's going to send you flying for two or four. Uh-oh. And you see how Ramo pulls up with that underhook, looking to throw it by or maybe even pancake. A minute 18 to go. And uh, was now a headlock attempt for Ramo. And he might score this negative. Now it is, did Ramo start to feel a little uncomfortable and felt like he had to go for a headlock and go big? But Who it knows? Pay, paid off for him there. And right. now he's into the lead. 
30 seconds to go, first period, 12 points on the board, and we are knotted 6-6. And on the inside, single has it up. Oh, and that's gonna be four. That's it, that's where he's oh, so good. boy, nasty throw. He's crazy, he is crazy when you're, when you're on his way. That was ridiculous. Nasty throw by Raymo, and he's gonna take a four point lead now, 15 seconds to go. That's gonna kill it on Vine later. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to need to get that on fine <laughs> ASAP as possible. Where's Nick Villacut? And so first period, an entertaining first wow. period of, to say the least. 16 points on the board, bodies go flying, and a beautiful four-point throw by Nick Ramo right at the end. 30 seconds in, period number two. 10-6, Nick Ramo with the lead. Shot from the outside, gets to the leg. And he's gonna sit it, catches the far hip. No score here, tripod for Ramo Thompson. Oh, Ramo really strong down. there. He's gonna give four. Four red. This pendulum, Christian. And back for Thompson. <laughs> and he's into the lead with criteria, I do believe now. This and is that's, that's awesome. That's the danger of staying in the Stay tripod. In the tripod. You, you know, Ramo, I was about to say, doing a great job defending from the tripod, but that's where it can bite you. I think everybody was thinking that. If you hold it too long, and, and Thompson, credit Thompson, because that is not easy to do. A lot of guys can hold that all day and not give up a big four. So Thompson right back in it. Now he takes the lead 10-10, but uh, with a minute 40 on the clock, I don't think that's the way the score is going to remain as these guys have been putting up points at a high clip. Right in the middle of the second period, 20 points on the board. Not at a 10. And again, double leg Thompson trying to run through. Body oh. lock, good luck though. And another four points for Nick Ramo. He's gonna go up 14 to four, a third four of the finals of this match. Under a minute to go in this bout. And, and we're gonna see more exchanges here because Thompson's gonna continue to attack as he has this entire match and has to with that lead. And Ramo um, gonna be able to sit back as he has a lot of this match. 35 to go on attacks, right side single leg has it up. Thompson to the corner and he'll take the two. Let's see if he fights no, from this tripod. No, they didn't get two. Oh, and he's gonna take him over the top. After the whistle, we're gonna go one on the push out. Confirmed, trailing by three is Rayma and, uh, excuse me, Thompson. And Thompson looked at his coach like throw the cube, but I believe once the whistle stopped. Right, you can't get that four. Yeah, his coach knows it, so wisely they don't challenge. 15. Drags, gets to the leg. Needs and a turn here. Two and a turn will do it. Five seconds to go. Thompson, close. Thompson, oh! oh! Two, but I believe it was just late. I believe it was just, no. They go two blue on that. Credit both, credit Thompson, credit Ramo. Fantastic match and we Nick Ramo doubles up. Yeah, Ramo doubles up. I was gonna say, we weren't lying to you when we said these finals were gonna be awesome. Tony, why is this one of your favorites? Well, right off the bat, Ramo came out tacking right away. He's up four points. And this was a match I think Ramo was heavily favored going into it. But Thompson came back, got a, got a uh, takedown, a lace. So I think uh, you know a lot of people look at this match like a really kind of a stepping out or a breaking out point for Alex Thompson. And you know there's 28 points, and that's those are type of matches. That's why everyone likes freestyle match because of these 28 points. Well, you can catch all the action from this year's Cadet and Junior Nationals live on Pro Wrestling, or watch the archive matches for free on USA Wrestling's YouTube page following the event. While we're out of time for this week, good luck to all our wrestlers looking to make a name for themselves on the big stage in Fargo. For Tony Hager, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Global Wrestling News.